Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very special edition of the NJPW Official English Podcast. My name is Chris Charlton, and New Japan Pro Wrestling is back. So, therefore, to help me celebrate the uh, NJPW World English Commentary Team of Kevin Kelly and Gino Gambino, gentlemen, you're Oscar Onagashimas. Yoshiko Onagashimas. Yoshiko Onagashimas. <laughs> it, <laughs> it never gets old. It never gets old. You'll never know how to say it. Um, no. No. Stick with the same gags. <laughs> Forever and ever and ever. It'll be tracksuits until like 2037. Gino's, okay. got, <laughs> Gino's got a white beard. And like <laughs> Chris, but yeah. seriously, mm. once the tracksuit like loses its luster, then it will be something else that Gino will fixate over that someone else has and he doesn't. It's like and we'll hear my whole life. Until, yeah, we want to do, you know, we'll want to run screaming into the street because it'll be Gino bitching about something new. But just get used to this. This, <laughs> yeah. this, is, uh, this is the way forward. Exactly, exactly. So uh, I convened us here because we had a little too. bit of news uh, this week in New Japan. Oh, we love you, Gino. What are you drinking? Someone has to. I, got, I got a coffee. A little bit, a little bit of Irish coffee, if you know what I'm saying. Ah, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> I convened us here together because uh, after 110 days, New Japan Pro Wrestling is back. 110 days uh, since uh, we last sort of got together in in a live format. Um, but we will be back Monday, June 15th with the Together Project Special on NJPWWorld.com. That'll be a live event with a mystery card. Following that, uh, the New Japan Cup, which we're going to go into in some great detail, starting um, Tuesday, June 16th uh, through to June 17th, and then Monday, June 22nd to June 24th, and July 1st to July 3rd on NJPWWorld.com. After that... The New Japan Cup Finals, my goodness, Saturday, July the 11th in Osaka Joe Hall. We're bringing the fans back to the venues. Finally, Saturday, July the 11th, and then Sunday, July the 12th, Dominion in Osaka Joe Hall, where Tetsuya Naito is going to defend the IWGP Intercontinental and Heavyweight Championships against the New Japan Cup winner. Now, the first few days, uh, you know, start going up until the New Japan Cup Finals, all of those will be no spectators allowed in the venue, uh, you know, because of obviously because of the global situation. That does mean as well that if you're a fan of our dulcet tones on live English commentary, uh, you know, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. But Kevin, you're going to keep the, the people updated in English as well, right? Yes. In fact, uh, I'll be the one, you know, I'll be taking care of the, these, uh, these first events. And then when we all get back together, uh, live in Japan, or maybe the next go round of shows to to be determined. But uh, I'll be doing these uh, these first ones solo, so we can technically get everything working, and and the shows can get up as quickly as possible with English commentary. Yeah. So uh, you know we can't wait to be sitting there at ringside again. But for now, Gino, finally getting those that news back after you know, you've been crying into your into your, well, I was going to say crying into your tracksuit sleeve, but crying into your, your bullet club handkerchief for the last 110 days. But how does it feel to finally have that information that, that now, now we're back, we're back in the ring again? Well, that's a, that's a bit of misinformation. Chris, I haven't been crying into the tracksuit I don't have. I've been crying into my wallet because it's empty. But the point is, <laughs> we're very excited to see that Ghetto finally gets his revenge oh. all this time. And Bullet Club will win the New Japan Cup, be Ghetto or Jado, and hand it off to someone that's more deserving, someone that deserves to be in that final. All you know, right, so, so we can excited. just, so now we can drop Gino from the call because he's already yeah, uh, completed his bracket and we can move on and we can have a regular conversation now. Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much, guys. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your show. <laughs> <laughs> you, you jumped the gun, yeah. Because you know what I what I want to do here is is go into a little bit of detail on the New Japan Cup, which uh, hopefully our very helpful uh, producer has has put the the New Japan Cup bracket. You'll be seeing it on your screen some somewhere, like here, over there, up there. So, so it'll be somewhere. 
uh, is the New Japan bracket. 32 wrestlers in the New Japan Cup. Now, normally it's a heavyweight tournament. You might have one or two juniors in there. Will Ospreay competed as a junior in there. Yusuke Taguchi in the past. Milano Collection AT in the past. But now for the first time, this is an open weight tournament, uh, which really does sort of blow everything wide open. We've got some incredibly incredibly surreal matchups to to see in here and and uh, you know i want to go through all of those first round matchups here and, and see if we can uh, we can pick some winners together so it all kicks off as i said tuesday june 16th on njpwworld.com live at 7 p.m japan standard time and uh, our first first round matchup to talk about is uh, already quite a, a hard-hitting one togi makabe versus yota suji and, uh, you know, the, the young lion against the, the dojo master, Kevin, in, in this uh, first round matchup. The last time we saw these two collide, uh, Suji was at the, at the start of or was dealing with a shoulder injury. And uh, Makabe really took the fight to him and Suji was in a lot of trouble. So will we see the same scenario here? I'll, I, I don't want to repeat myself, but one of the biggest overarching elements in this entire tournament is going to be ring rust, preparedness, and how everybody is feeling after 110 days off. I would say that since these guys have turned pro in, uh, without you know, taking an injury out of the equation, they haven't had 110 days away from wrestling since before they started so that is going to be a big telling factor and that's the reason why this tournament to me is so unpredictable now gino i wanted to ask you what what your thoughts you know what do you think? almost as unpredictable as <laughs> well one of these like unpredictable elements is especially when you see um suji in this match we'll, we'll talk about gabriel kidd later on uh yuya Romero, uh also as well is that we're so used to sitting ringside at Korakran and hearing the crowds really get behind a young lion and, and will them to pull off that upset. Now, here we have a New Japan Cup environment where there aren't spectators in play. Do you think, Gino, that's going to give Suji a little bit of extra focus or without that energy of the crowd there, is, is that going to hinder himself? I think we've seen Suji does really play off the crowd as things go well for him. You know, he's got that real fighting spirit about him. But as well as, you know, Kevin talks about ring rust, which I agree with. It's kind of hard to shake that off after 110 days. But now we're going to see Suji at 110%. 110 days to recover that shoulder. 110 days to get rid of any nagging injuries, soreness. And they're still working out. They're still training. They're still doing all the things a young lion does. I, I think he's the dark horse in this whole cup. I think there's an opportunity here for him to come out of this uh, even bigger and better than we've seen him in the past. Now let's move on to the the second matchup here. Um, quite the one you know, I saw Kevin. You had it circled on Twitter, and like I think most right of us away as well. We're like right away. My goodness, Tomohiro Ishii versus El Desperado in the first round of the New Japan Cup. Um, this is is going to be quite quite insane, and you kind of um, expect here. I, I don't know, is, is it safe to expect a, a real kind of slugfest here? What, what are you expecting from this match that had you circle it, Kevin? I definitely think that Desperado is going to look to take the fight to Ishii. I think that he has a, a, he <coughs> excuse me, a heavyweight mentality. And I believe uh, that he is going to look to break out. You know, I read that interview that, he had done recently, uh, Desperado had done recently on NJPW1972.com, and I really began to learn more about him and the type of athlete and fighter that he is. That's what, to me, you know, Ishii versus anybody, it's an interesting matchup. You know you're going to see toughness personified. But what I can't wait to see is how Desperado puts those words into action, and that's why I think this match is going to be a real standout. Yeah, certainly that, that jaw that he got socked by Jun Kasai a year ago and fractured his jaw, um, you know, had it wired for several months. Now it'll be coming back, you know, stronger, you would hope. Um, it's certainly going to be tested, Gino. Gino, you've stood opposite 
Tomohiro Ishii in, in tag matches before. Um, stood? <laughs> not for long. Uh, <laughs> like, but you it's, stood there. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, like <laughs> it's like the Tommy McGee Bret Hart match of Australian wrestling. No one's ever seen <laughs> it outside of it happening. But look, the truth is, it, it's something Desperado's going to be thinking about. You know, seven months of a jaw wide shut is quite distressing to you and to your mentality. And the idea that you have to face Ishii and there's a chance you could break it again. I'm telling you now, he's going to be second-guessing himself throughout that whole match. We've seen him perform so well coming back, but now it's Ishii. This is another challenge. This is something he really has to step up to. Our third match is our third match here. 31 years this business, but first ever New Japan Cup. Jado against the most experienced person in all of the New Japan Cup history, Toriano. Um, you know, I mean, Gino, you've already pitched your tent. But yes, uh, we, we were fine. Jado's got this in the bag. I mean, case by case, you know, who cares? 31 <laughs> years this business, you know. This man is, is built to win this match. I'm, oh, this is the most exciting match on the card for me in the first round. I can't wait to see what Jado gets up to against Yano. Well, two of the sm- is- smartest Go people ahead. there are around. You know, I mean, like, they, there's, there's nobody smarter. There's, there's no two uh, veteran devious scheming SOBs in, in pro wrestling that Toriano and Jado, Kevin. It's the, it's the best match that Jado could hope for in terms of being able to physically withstand the attacks of his opponent. But it's the worst matchup for Jado because Yano's every bit, you know, the, the sneaky style, the dirty tricks, however you want to play it, the rule breaking, if you will. Um, if it was Jado versus Yoda Suji, Jado would be my overwhelming favorite to win that match. But as it is, with Yano, Yano's pretty much, he, he's very, very consistent in getting past the first round of the New Japan Cup. And I, I, I expect him to win here, but Jado's got a lot of sleeves to pull tricks out of. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of think that if this match goes longer than a minute, maybe jado has got it. I think if Yano's going to win, it's going to be in like 30 <laughs> seconds. And the, the bigger question here is that now we don't have the live crowd as, as witnesses. If, as and when those monitors do go out, we're in a, a whole bunch of trouble. Nobody will know what will what'll happen in that matchup. We don't really know. You know, again, the technical, uh, hopefully... You know, with this 110 days off, they've been able to work through all those technical bugaboos. And I have full faith and confidence of the, uh, you know, the world team to be able to make sure that those monitors go out. It just, you know, it's coincidence. But uh, I just hope that everything will be uh, ship shape and ready to go for the New Japan Cup. Last match on our first day, uh, quite the, the quite a remarkable odd pairing again. Tomaki Homa versus Hiromu Takahashi, and uh, this is wow, a very very strange one to look at on paper. Certainly, if you knew Tomaki Homa from his, I guess his his recent output, um, but you know when you you look back at the history of Tomaki Homa, the absolutely insane death defying uh brawler the guy coming up the, the top rope with the kakeshis um you would have to wonder you know i think again that 110 days will help a tomaraki homer especially with those that legacy of neck issues and he's gonna pull out absolutely every stop that there is against hiromu takashi who has to be the most motivated guy gino in this tournament well you're right these are two men who have very little to no fear in what they do in matches like both went away with injuries both came back probably stronger than what they were beforehand but we got to remember that takahashi had a opportunity at the championships that naito holds the leader of lij and this could start now his journey to going back to that if he wins the new japan cup he gets another chance and honestly that's going to be at the back of his mind this whole time He's got 32, instead of having, uh, you know, a friendly, if you will, a a non-title match against Tetsuya Naito, now Hiromu Takahashi has to go through a field of 32 to win the New Japan Cup and face Tetsuya Naito for both championships. And how, like, how perfect is that story that that match that we got denied, it was the the first big match that we were going to have since these cancellations. Now the potential for Hiromu to get that for all the gold in the very same building 
that that match was made initially as well uh, back at New Beginning in Osaka. Gino, let me ask you a question. Please. Uh, very rare, very rare that a junior heavyweight gets the better of a heavyweight in a singles match. Do you think that there is going to be pressure on Hanma as a heavyweight to not fall to a junior heavyweight, albeit the junior heavyweight champion and one of the most you know outstanding talents in all of professional wrestling? Uh, that's exactly the point I was just about to make. It is the junior heavyweight champion, but there is this unwritten thing amongst the locker room that, you know, when you're a heavyweight, you don't go down to a junior heavyweight. It's uh, not beneath you, but it's just a kind of an unwritten uh, mentality in the locker room. So this is a lot of pressure on Homna. So, but let's just remember, again, like you said, the junior heavyweight champion, and that's no small feat. Yeah, and that's something that, you know, if you watched Hiromu's interview on New Japan Worlds that, that went up recently, how he, he did make that that point of, well, hey, you know, it's, it, we do see heavyweights fight junior heavyweights in, in tag matches and all the rest of it. And it's always the expectation that the heavyweight will win. And Hiromu is really seeking to, to overcome that. So that's the first day of matches. We're also going to have one special match in there as well on day one. Um, but... Out of those those first four no. matches, who's gonna who's gonna make it through to to the end of this this New Japan Cup? Who's who's gonna be uh, pushing through to that semifinal? I will go first, and I will say that it will be Ishi. Ishi is because again, the way I sort of did my bracket, I have Makabe and Ishi both winning. I have Ishi beating Makabe. And I just don't see Hiromu Takahashi defeating Tomohiro Ishii. I had Hiromu uh, getting past Honma, and I had some sort of wacky, I crossed off double DQ, I crossed off double count out, I circled Yano, I circled Jato, I crossed both out. So I'm not sure what I meant by that. But <laughs> Hiromu versus Ishii is my bracket final, and it's Ishii to me. Yeah. All right, well, then I'm going to go. I mean, I guess it's going to be a big surprise. But look, if it wasn't to be Jado, let's just say there was some catastrophic and Jado had to go to Hawaii and, you know, spend a bit of time, you know, spreading his wealth or something. I don't know. Let's just say Jado, for some reason, didn't make it to the final. I think Yoda Suji. I'm just going to put my money on it. I think this is an opportunity for a young lion for the first time ever to win the New Japan Cup, to come out of 110 days. It's like when they rest a horse, okay? The horse gets rested for 110 days, it wins its next race. Always back that horse, okay? I'm going to put my money on Yoda Suji. Put $20 down with you. What Kevin, if everybody you buy gets me a coffee. Stomach. Everybody gets stomach. <laughs> everybody gets food poisoning. <laughs> everybody has food Mathematically. Food what about then? <laughs> Mathematically could be one of us, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so day two on New Japan Worlds, all of these events at 7 p.m. Japan Standard Time. The match that uh, surely everybody has, so I know Gino has been palpitating <laughs> since this, this was revealed. I can't it, even spell palpitating, mate. <laughs> like, honestly. <laughs> well, you know, when we first had the, the New Japan Cup uh, announced back in March, you know, everybody had uh, Kazuchika Okada and Jay White circled, and, and it seemed to be... Uh, you know, Kevin, you've, you've said in the past as well that whoever wins that match has probably got a damn good shot at, at winning the New Japan Cup. Uh, now we have a very different scenario as Okada takes on Gedo in the first round of the New Japan Cup. And uh, Gino, what's, what's the key to victory in this one? Car accident? Hit job? Wow. <laughs> How dare you. How dare you Wait say that? He already tried that once, Chris. True. Yeah, I, I rewatched <laughs> that match hey. recently. We were yes, we were at Corey Crane Hall. Me and Kevin were. Our I comes... think what's on Ghetto's side at the moment is Chris's internet connection. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was one of the last shows right before uh, a couple of domes ago, and uh, Gato accused a Chaos fan, guy wearing a Chaos shirt of uh, causing a car accident. He tried to get out of the match. Of course, it was all a ruse. And uh, he wound up, albeit trying in vain, he tried in vain. Uh, but he had some, Okada was in trouble for some moments, no doubt about it. 
Well, Carter was in trouble for some moments, Gino, because Jay White happened to be there on the night as well. Because Jay White's the greatest thing to ever happen to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Be Let's that, get the hashtag Ghetto's Revenge going. Because after the way Okada treated Ghetto, like a, like a slave, like a nobody, he pushed him around, he made him do things for him. And now, now it's his revenge. It's his time to get back at Okada. It's his time to stand on top of that mountain. It's his time to win the New Japan Cup. And what a great way to start with hashtag Ghetto's Revenge. Well, if he were to, if he were to do that, you know, as, as you predict, <laughs> if he were to, uh, it would be quite the achievement. Mm. He would be doing it on his own merits. Um, Jay White is in Florida. As He's always. not in Japan. So uh, certainly, you know, it, it would be a, a quite an impressive feat for, for Gedo to make it all the way through to the finals. So, you know, no matter what kind of pratfalls and, and pitfalls and traps might be laid, uh, you know, on, on, t- on Wednesday. Your negative tone is unappreciated, Chris. <laughs> you're, not, you're not the first person to tell me that. All right. So uh, we go on our, our next match in the first round. Uh, something that's been brewing for a good, well, close to, to 20 years, you know, years and years of, of New Japan history. Yuji Nagata versus Minoru Suzuki. Kevin, their 11th singles match, and they're tied right now at 5-5. Five and five. Yeah, I called a couple of these gems from the past, and when I look at this bracket, uh, whereas in the first bracket, it was sort of, you know, I was more laser focused on, uh, I found it easier to pick a winner. I can legitimately pick four different wrestlers here to win this bracket. This is not a layup for Okada. It might read on paper like advantage Okada, but man, oh man, Okada versus Suzuki. Um, the good thing is, and, and not to jump ahead, but the winner of this match will have a week to rest and recover before they have to face the winner of Okada Gato with Okada being the heavy favorite. So it's not back-to-back, and I think that's going to benefit. Suzuki, uh, what kind of, what's he going to come in like? We know Nagata works hard every day. I'm sure Suzuki's going to come in great, but this is one I just can't wait to see. How fortunate, Gino, do you feel to actually not be sitting in ringside when Norris <laughs> Suzuki comes out for this matchup? Look, I can say anything I want to from behind the keyboard, okay? He, has, he can't touch me all the way here in Australia. So I will be saying what I really want to say to that man right to that screen as I'm watching live. I'll tweet it as well. What do you got there, Kevin? Uh, it's a sketch pad, and I'm getting the pen out because I want to take some notes here. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Don't, don't worry about that. That's okay. I'm, I'm good. I'm what? good. You said you're a keyboard tough guy. Suzuki can't touch you, and he you're can't not touch afraid me. of him. I'm not afraid of him. What's he ever done? Who's he ever beat? Oh my god. <laughs> oh well. Anyway, nice knowing know you, everyone. Let's do a two for one <laughs> on a benefit show for Gato and Gino. How about that? <laughs> hey, look at he's biased. Next Yuya match, Chris. U- Wrap this up. <laughs> Yuya Uemura versus Yoshinobu Kanemaru in the next round. A, a hot up and coming, we would assume, a junior heavyweight against uh, one of the very best junior heavyweight wrestlers, uh, certainly in Japanese wrestling history. Um, you would imagine at this point a very, very, very tall mountain to climb, Gino, for Uemura in this one. Yeah, look, it is a lot for one person to do, especially a young line getting through this whole tournament. But again, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to show what you've got. Even if you do come out with the, with the loss, it's all about the fire and the passion you show. We've seen it in the past where young lions have maybe not been successful through a new Japan cup or a young lions cup, but have come out the other end more popular with the crowd stronger and have learnt more in a shorter span of time by being in all these matches. I have got a couple of thoughts on this one. I have said this before. I'll say it here. Yoshinobu Kanemaru is one of my most favorite wrestlers to watch. Uh, He does everything very, very well. He is high-level talent. But I am telling you this. I wouldn't bet the house, but I might put a couple of pennies down I smell upset. I don't know what it is. 
just in my gut, it's screaming Uemura to me. I don't know why. It, on paper, this is a route. Kanemaru, 23 years of experience. He's got everything. And Uemura has got a ton of heart and an incredibly bright future. But like Gino said, with Suji in that opener, I'm telling you what, Uemura is my guy to pull the upset here in this one. You think, Evan, that Minoru Suzuki potentially raiding down the road for, for Uemura in the New Japan Cup might be a motivator. He was he had a death rush going after uh, Suzuki last time we saw him in, in Korokor and Hall back in February. It, it's a very dangerous situation for him. Uh, took his life into his own hands. They wouldn't meet until the finals of the block. But it would be an interesting matchup to see. If Uemura is thinking Suzuki, though, he's going to get tripped up to Kanemaru. He's got to take one match at a time. He's got to prepare for Kanemaru like this is his one and only match. Otherwise, he's going to, he's going to lose. Kanemaru is too good. And then another, uh, well, another young lion going up against another Bullet Club boy, Gino, as uh, Gabe Kidd takes on Taiji Ishimori in the first round. Just tick this as a win already. Let's just get it out the way. Ishimori's got this locked in the bag. I, I would put my house on it, Kevin. Unlike you, who is not confident in his decisions, I'm telling you, I would bet my whole house. This beautiful mansion I live in of one bedroom, one bathroom, I would put it on the line <laughs> in the sense that he will win this match. Gabriel Kidd's great. I taking, like him. He's a good... He's a good bloke. Now, listen, what you're doing, though, Gino, is you're taking a heavy favorite, okay? One of the best junior Ooh. heavyweight wrestlers over the last decade plus... Yes. And you're saying yes. that you would bet the house in picking him to win a match against a young lion who's had, what, five, six New Japan uh, pro wrestling matches? Singles matches? Correct. What a joke. Come More on, go out on the limb, pal. <laughs> Listen, when I point to my head, Kevin, that means I'm smart. Everyone knows that in wrestling, okay? <laughs> smart. That's a smart bet, okay? <laughs> so let me just say that yes, I would bet the house on Ishimori. Now, what happens in the next round, I don't know, okay? I don't have a crystal ball with me. But you got to say, it's locked in. Love Gabriel Kidd, nice dude, all that jazz, right? But let's be honest here, Ishimori's got this in the bag. Okay, so if it does go to a block final, we talked about a potential uh, block final in that, in that uh, group, Kevin, of, of Urimura and Suzuki. Potentially, Gino, if, if your hopes all plan out, then you're going to get Ishimori versus Gedo. Uh, for the chance to see who's, who's going to make it to the finals. So, uh, and Ishimori will do the right thing. What? Think of Poker Are you Doom Part me? 2. No, we, <laughs> no every, everyone knows the plan. There is a plan. We're going to stick to it. There's a roadmap. There's a Bullet Club roadmap. They don't show me. I'm not allowed to go in the meetings or talk to anyone or look at anyone. But there is a plan. And I have a feeling Ghetto is a very integral part of that plan. Right. They, they took think, that plan and faxed I think it. Gino, I, I think Gino may have gotten half of that block right. Uh, if all shakes out according to my prediction, which never works out, but can you imagine an Okada Ishimori match? That's wow. what I think is going to determine the man who moves on from that from that bracket and from that block. It's th this situation that has presented itself has led to more interest and intrigue and unpredictability than any other New Japan Cup in recent memory. Mm. And with this field size, there's so many combinations, so many different ways that it could go. But I'm leaning towards an Okada Ishimori uh, bracket final. Let me just ask a very quick question. And this is just me going off the, the Bullet Club track here for a second. Let's say it's Suzuki in this block final. Whoever has to face him, if it's Gato, Okada, whoever it might be, that is a big hurdle to have before going to the New Japan Cup final. Suzuki's not going to take it easy. Suzuki's not going to sit there and go, oh, look, whoever wins here needs to go to the final. He's going to beat the crap out of whoever's there. And if that person wins, they have to then go into the next, you know, into the final. That's a lot to ask from someone. Yeah, and don't forget as well, if you do even make it to the final, you've got a, that title match the very next day. Yeah, you know, at, at Dominion. So that's a demanding schedule uh, a for anyone to, to pick up. Yep. And, All right, and so, the one guy who is the one guy who's sitting back and uh, not having to get touched once is the man who will face uh, the New Japan Cup winner. 
after yep. one person goes through 31 others, Tetsuya Naito sits there and will be, I think, in prime position. But that's retain. what we said. That you, we said the very same thing last spring about Jay White, and look what happened in Madison Square Garden, Gina. True, very true. Do you remember what happened he in Madison sold. Square Garden, Gino? Do you remember that? Yes. Remember what happened Jay to White. White? Yes, he sold out Madison Square Garden single-handedly. I do remember. Single Thank you for bringing it up. It's nice to hear you talk nice about him for once, Kevin. Thank you. Okay, so we've gone through the first two nights of the New Japan Cup, June the 16th and June the 17th of New Japan World, and now we're going to hop over to the next week, Monday, June 22nd. We're going to go over to the right-hand side of the bracket, which um, a lot of these matches, uh, you know, three, well, two of these matches are the same as, as what we originally had in the, in the first New Japan Cup uh, draw, and both of these looked incredibly hard to call uh, as we see... Well, you know, the, the new IWGP Tag Team Champions participate against two of their potential future challenges, starting with Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Taichi, Kevin. It's a, uh, I was glad to see in, in amongst, you know, so much new with this year's New Japan Cup that we were still going to get two big premier matches that, uh, we were looking forward to seeing, eagerly anticipating. Um, Tanahashi and Tai Chi, uh, and uh, again, it's another test for Tai Chi. It's a test for Tai Chi, and we see glimpses, we see, you know, little hopes, little embers burning. He's got to step up and he's got to win this match, in my opinion. I think he can. I lean Tanahashi. Uh, who looked to be in great shape at the press conference. And we'll see. We'll see what Tai Chi shows up. It was back in February in Korokoran Hall, Gino, that we saw the Golden Ace team of Ibushi and Tanahashi beat G.O.D. and win the IWGP Tag Team Championships. Now, right after that, Tai Chi and Zack Sabre Jr. came out, flattened Tanahashi and Ibushi, and seemed to jump to the front of the line. So I wonder ordinarily you know you, you you tend to wear the black hat a little bit but you, you're gonna have to support tanahashi in in kind of denying taichi and denying taichi and zack sabre jr you're from from jumping the line in in the tag team championship stakes because i mean to be fair those that's god's shot right that's god's rematch you know chris you're you're a lot like a, a bad girlfriend you bring up old stuff all the time you've got screen caps of bad things that happen for bullet club and god but you, you have to be really, you know, straight with this one. This is Tanahashi's bread and butter. He is the ace for a reason, okay? This is where he makes his mark. This is what he knows. He's done this so many times in the past. I can't see him being stopped by anyone really in that bracket. So it is his opportunity again to shine and I'm give us a bit of normality almost for him to go through and, again, the ace to be the man at the end. But you know, it's it's interesting. Sort of bringing up all of those those old things in the past. The last time New Japan ever held matches without people present, Tanahashi was involved. He was back in Kazunari Murakami in a in a cage match all the way back in two thousand and four. But since then, Kevin Tanahashi has been the ace, and we talk about so many times how the energy of the crowd will help Hiroshi Tanahashi to victory. Does that play a part, perhaps? In, in potentially Tanahashi's downfall. He's, he's always relying on the, on the audience for that energy that, that perhaps isn't a factor in the first round of the New Japan Cup. And I could, I could make the argument, though, that Taichi relies on the negative energy for the crowd, that he seems, to, uh, he seems to provoke. But then the opposite of that coin is also true with Taichi, is that sometimes the crowd is a distraction. Um, I think that Thomas feeding off that crowd is going to be a, uh, a big, it could, it's a potential hurdle for him, but I'm, I'm to further on Gino's point. This is where the ace of the company stands out and no one has been more forward facing and more talking about uh, the challenges that have, uh, you know, we've been dealing with and what we're getting through and what we're going through all together 
than Tanahashi. He needs to step up and he needs to really make a huge statement in this tournament. A first round defeat for Tanahashi, I think, would be very embarrassing. Yeah. And we move on to, to next, a, a match we've seen an awful lot of times over the last few years, and it's always phenomenal. Kota Ibushi and Zack Sabre Jr. Who comes out on top of that one? Gino, you know, who's, who's your pick? It's, a, it's, a, it's always a real pick. I'm, I'm just going to be really honest with everyone. Everyone is going, oh, but what about this person? And what about this match that we missed out on? This is an A-class match. This is top of the heap, no matter when this tournament was to be held. I cannot pick a winner here. I have been watching a lot of Zack Sabre Jr. lately. I don't know why. It's just something I started doing during this you know, time off. And the man is incredible. And the thing is, Ibushi is too. So wh- what do you do? Where do you pick? I can't pick a side. I don't know if you can, Kevin, but I'm really struggling to say that one man has an advantage over the other. Uh, Zach has uh, Ibushi's number in this tournament. And Ibushi went 0-2 at the Dome. Uh, and Zach, I felt, won pretty convincingly against Sonata at the Dome. But that's six months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot can happen in between then. But my gut reaction when, when we were first staring down a, a Zack Sabre Jr. versus Kota Ibushi match for the New Japan Cup was, well, it's advantage ZSJ. Because I'm not so sure Ibushi's gotten that hangover out of his head yet for what happened at the Dome. And it seems like he and Tanahashi are now focused on the tag team titles. So, uh, but that's, that's a long time ago and a lot can happen. So, Chris, you, you, uh, I would say you probably have spent more time talking to these two athletes uh, than maybe any of us. What's your gut tell you about this one? My gut is almost the opposite to yours, Kevin. You know, I would say ordinarily going back when this match was announced in may in march rather you know i was kind of thinking maybe zach saber jr is spreading himself a little bit too thinly you know he he was going after the tag titles with tai chi in the meantime we saw him new beginning in in osaka he immediately targeted john moxley for the you know it seems that u.s title might still be on his mind he's only just lost the british heavyweight championship to will osprey who's in england at the moment so, you know, he seemed to be pulled in, in a lot of different directions. But now that he's had this 110 days to, to really reset and refocus, uh, I think it's going to be the most dangerous person in this tournament. And he's another guy that really doesn't, that, you know, the presence of a crowd or the absence of a crowd doesn't phase Zack Sabre Jr. Um, he's going to come in with the exact same game plan that he always does. And I think that's really going to help him uh, through this first round. Do this with me, guys, real quick. So, like, with the, these four, we won't spend long doing this, but this is something that entered. Just rank Tanahashi, Taichi, Ibushi, Sabre Jr., one through four, with one being oh. the best and four being the, the not best. You're going to tell <laughs> the me. The not best. <laughs> the not best. You're going to tell because it's a pretty stellar group. You're going to tell me that either Ibushi or Zack Sabre Jr. aren't one, two, in that, you're going to tell yeah. me that Tai Chi isn't going to get some feel, some love for a three in that group? Mm. It, you have to think at this point that there are going to be some who, out of those four athletes, would put Tanahashi at the bottom. And that's no. crazy to think about. I never not. thought. I never thought in my wildest dreams that we would be talking about Kota Ibushi being 0-2 at the Dome. But that's what happened. And I just, I just think that, you know, I think that if, if uh, Kota Ibushi, Zack Sabre Jr., I mean, you, you guys do it. You try it. Come on. Get, get, some, get some on you. Rank I, uh, one to four. One, okay, I'm going to rank him one to four. Number one, Jay White. No, but <laughs> in all seriousness, <laughs> I, I, I have Tanahashi at number one. I can't believe you think number four. Or someone would I think number four. It. It's, I know, I know. I'm not, put, I'm not putting words in anyone's mouth or anything, okay? But Tanahashi's got to be number one. It, you have to. I, I don't know. I, I can't see him anywhere else in the list. And for me, Zach's number two. You cannot put, I'm sorry, you cannot put Tanahashi <laughs> ahead of both Kota Ibushi and Zack Sabre Jr. I can, and I will. You can't. 
<laughs> uh, for me, yes. I'm sorry. I, I, I really do. I, I think the ace is the ace and always will be. Now, can the ace pull it together? Can the ace overcome? Of course. Mm. He could win the, mm. He could win this out of this four-man block. He could win two matches and move on. Yeah. It wouldn't shock me if he did. Chris, what do you think? Um, I think if, if you look at all of these four right now, as they are and, and as they have been this year in 2020 and, and coming back, um, Zack Sabre Jr. has to be the number one. I will say that. Underneath that, you know, that's, that's, well, that's, that's a hard thing to, to kind of really gauge. But I would say out of these four guys, if there's one that's, that's going to be um, sort of up there in the, in the semifinals and finals, it's Zack Sabre Jr. But can we all agree that Tai Chi's number four. Is that, would that not be universal? Would that not be universal? I would put Tai Chi at four. I'm sure that some of the Tai Chi loyalists would disagree. But uh, I agree. I agree with Chris. <laughs> I would go Zach, Ibushi, then Tanahashi, and then Tai Chi. Right. I don't think Tanahashi's been number three on any list ever. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be uh, the great British Bake Off and he would still be number one. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm absolutely shocked. Tanahashi would have this awesome hair and this incredible yes. stone yeah, right. red it would just bore everybody. Yeah. Not Karen <laughs> hair. <laughs> so- he wants to speak to somebody's manager. <laughs> was maybe the greatest line ever. Oh, uh, oh dear. Um, Sonata and Yusuke Taguchi. Now, mm. I think this might be a sleeper for a match of the tournament. And I, you know, I'm not kidding. You, you kind of look at, at El Desperado and, and Ishii earlier on. This in a very different sense. A junior heavyweight versus a heavyweight. But two of the most orthodox styles as, as much as Taguchi is unorthodox in his mentality a very classical professional wrestler Sonata very much a classical professional wrestler and uh, you know I, I think this is really going to be a, a real treat uh, to see Taguchi and Sonata in the New Japan Cup uh, I think Taguchi can make Sonata look really bad in spots uh, Sonata needs some he needed a jolt uh, because he laid an egg against Jay White. He had laid an egg against Zack Sabre Jr. He needs a spark. He needs a jolt. Has 110 days removed from the ring, provided him the proper mental and physical properties to be able to win this whole thing. He's got to get through to Gucci. It's got, uh, it's not a trap game, but it's got some rough spots, no doubt. Uh, look, I think I think for me it's it's a pretty easy one that Sonata's just got great momentum. I know we've had to break, but I can just see Sonata rolling through again. I don't know. I don't see anything really in his way in this tournament unless he meets someone like a Zack Sabre, Tanahashi, or an Ibushi in the next round. That's where I think the slip up is. Right, right. But you know, I mean, Sonata might be looking past. It, it's always that. Yeah, that, that sort of stop-start, the momentum of Sonata is, is, has been a big question. The, the question will be how he has taken that break, I think, and uh, you know how he's going to take carry that mental momentum forward into the New Japan Cup. So uh, the last match on this day now, we were scheduled to have Shingo Takagi and Will Ospreay. That was a, a match that we all had circled. But the replacement is almost just as good. Shingo Takagi against Sho. Um, it was the first night of the best of the super juniors. So rather than a rematch from the final of best of the super juniors last year, we're getting a rematch of the opening night. Shingo Takagi and Sho. Sho has been obsessed with Shingo ever since Shingo debuted all the way back in 2018. Uh, it all came to a head in, in BOSJ last year. And then don't forget when we were at Sapporo and Shingo Takagi won the Never Open Eight title, the first person he was drawing with was Sho at ringside. So there's a lot of skin in the game, so to speak, for half a Roppongi 3K. Gino, what do you think about this one? My personal feeling is this is an exciting match. I cannot wait. I, I love Sho's intensity. I love Shingo's madness and his strength in the ring. These two guys could not be a better match for me in this, in this bracket. I think this is the show stealer for me. 
I think these are the two that are just going to blow the roof off wherever that doesn't matter if there's no one there. These two guys are literally just going to go to war together and I cannot wait. I look at it like this, Chris. I think this is now to win the new Japan cup. You've got to win five matches. I think for show, this is a one match tournament. Yes, he absolutely. has one goal in mind. He has beating Shingo Takagi on his mind. First, last, and everything else is secondary. If Sho beats Takagi, which wouldn't shock me, he will lose in his next round regardless of whomever he faces, even though it would be a huge upset because he will be so mentally and physically capped by what he was able to accomplish by finally beating Shingo. He's cooked, right, mate? Did I say it correctly? Cooked. You did. Cooked. Perfectly cooked. But you're cooked. right. That's what, that's what I mean by this war that's going to happen. Either men, whoever comes to the top, I'm leaning more towards Shingo. They're going to be spent. It's going to be completely... I think the tournament ends there. I think you're right. It's a one-match tournament for both men. Put your helmet on. <laughs> it's, it's <too> smart. <laughs> that might fit me. <laughs> It's uh, <laughs> my alma mater, Florida State University. Thank you very much. Right. I don't know what he just said. I don't know. Go. Shut go. go. <laughs> what's the, what's the go and by the way, yeah. not, not for nothing, We uh, just to take a second here, I thought that Chairman Sugabayashi did an outstanding job in that press conference. I felt like yeah. he and Tanahashi both explained everything so simply, so succinctly, and yes. left everybody with such a good, positive feeling. Uh, I felt like the entire wrestling world was just thrilled. Relieved, relieved thrilled, mm. excited, energized with, the, with just a very simple, basic announcement delivered beautifully by Chairman Sugubayashi. Couldn't have done a better job. Yeah, I, and totally I, I think as well, uh, Chairman Sugabayashi, his his hair is also underrated. It's quite lush. So good. Okay, point. I, I've I've noticed all our hairlines are terrible at the moment. <laughs> look at look at mine. Look at this. What's happening? We're getting well, old. Mine's, mine's been on the retreat, you know, since uh, Clinton was president. So I think we've got uh, you got some catching up to do for, to get as bad as this, pal. <laughs> yeah, look. Uh, look, at least the weight's going down. That's my. That's the positive. Chris looks like he hasn't eaten in weeks. So can I just say, <laughs> Chris, we're pre listen. We're sending thoughts and prayers, and we hope you get released very soon. We're negotiating with the. We're negotiating with the hostage takers, sure, and sure, we pray. Sure. We pray that you'll be out soon. I've, I've been working just, from home for. <laughs> just blink some Morse code. We'll get the message out. <laughs> That's why I'm always doing that behind the commentary table. You know, I'm kind of hoping. All right, so uh, let's move on. Day four, the final day of the first round, Tuesday, June the 23rd. We kick things off with Hiroyoshi Tenzan and Yoshihashi. Uh, another match that was confirmed back in, in March, carried forth now. Um, Tenzan and Yoshihashi. They, there was a great interview uh, with Yoshihashi on the NJPW1972.com where the, you know, he sort of talked about his coming to New Japan and the origins of, of his passion and had wanted to be a wrestler since he was in eighth grade. Um, and perhaps, you know, I think, again, this is one of those things where we look at the, the gaps and, and Tenzan sort of recuperating from injuries. Yoshi has his dealt with his own injuries and perhaps a chance to really sort of tap into that fire and passion that we we kind of have been seeing in, in that in that interview on 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 the new japan website but uh but gino who have you got in this one uh i'm a little bit torn but i i think you're you're really spot on the one of the probably benefits of uh this extra content that we're getting on new japan world and on the new japan youtube as well is we are seeing i guess the story behind the man we're seeing exactly what it is that drives people we're getting a lot of good interviews and i think it's really changed my mind about a few people too so even though i probably can't pick a winner per se uh or you know i don't want to comment too much about this match i just feel like I now know a little bit more of the backstory, and that I think it may, is making this New Japan Cup more interesting. I don't know, Kevin. I don't know if you feel the same, but from all the things I've seen, I'm kind of 
I'm kind of now caught up in the moment of, you know, what the New Japan Cup means to some of these wrestlers. It's very, uh, it has been great to be able to see this and to to sort of walk in their shoes, if you will, when we normally don't get to. As far as this match is concerned, Yoshihashi is the favorite, and he should win. But if Tenzan is able, if he, it, I think the match comes down to this. Yoshihashi with the butterfly lock, Tenzan with the anaconda vice. It's more likely to me that Yoshihashi struggles to get the butterfly lock on while Tenzan's anaconda vice works on everybody. So that's where I'm at. And we'll see. Um, it's a, it's a, a slight, I, I wouldn't say a heavy favorite, but Yoshihashi gets my pick for this one. All right. Uh, we've got next up a, an intriguing one, uh, two junior heavyweights and two guys that know, know each other quite well in Yo and Bushi. And this is another, you know, I think this is going to be another one of those very orthodox style of matches and uh, kind of cognitive. We've, we've kind of heard from a lot of different people how, uh, how both of those guys, Bushi and Yo, they kind of take that, that distant look. They're very analytical. They, they kind of take a very strategic approach to their matches, albeit in different ways. So this is going to be a you know, really interesting match, I think, from the, the pace and the flow. I don't think they're going to go 100 miles an hour. Um, I think that you're going to see a lot of interesting little tactics and little stratagems being at play, uh, Gino, in this one. Yeah, something tells me maybe Bushi's got the upper hand in this one. I think those those tactics are going to come into play. Yo is a you know very good wrestler and, and has had a, some really big wins with the junior tag team titles under his belt. But I think as a single wrestler, Bushi's maybe got a little bit more behind him in this one. And I can see that that's probably the way we're going in that direction. Um, I just don't think Yo's got enough for this at the moment. I give Bushi the advantage here. Uh, because Bushi's most recent body of work over the last year has been outstanding. We forget that he caught a surprise over Zack Sabre Jr. in one of the last shows of the year at Cork Could Hall. We remember back to Power Struggle and how he gave Will Ospreay everything and then some nearly unseating the junior heavyweight champion. And Bushi won. He started off slow in Best of Super Juniors, dropped his first three, and then didn't lose. He was 6-0. and oh. So it, from his last six of the best of Super Junior, what he did with Osprey to the win over uh, Zack Sabre Jr., Bushi's great. And, mm. But I, Chris, to your point, this is the match where somebody's got to pull out something different. Somebody's got to break the mold and the pattern because each is so analytical that we're so prepared for what the other is expected to do that if you throw a curveball at them, uh, I think whoever can do that will win. Now move on to another, what should be another sort of hard hitting, a, a slugfest, a hoss fight, if you will. Satoshi Kojima against Evil. And uh, Kevin, when you talk about people who are on kind of, in a sense, a, a motivated streak before we took the break, Satoshi Kojima was, was one of those. I think Kojima saw a lot of his compatriots, guys like uh, Jushin Thunder Liger and Abin and Kanishi retiring. That really inspired him, motivated him. You know, he had a great singles match with Ultimo Guerrero during Fantastica Mania, had a great singles match with Jeff Cobb uh, at New Beginning in the, in the USA as well. And, uh, you know, he, he really seemed inspired and, and motivated to take his game to the next level. But you could say the same thing about Evil, who's been kind of pushed to the back burner a little bit. Yes, this is the opportunity for each to break out of their collective shell. We'll talk about who we think is going to win. But to me, this whole bracket is wide open. The winner of this, Matt, the winner of this match can easily make it to the final of this bracket. That's how close this bracket is, and that's how important I think this match is. Evil's a, a lean for me in terms of being the favorite, but Kojima really could, uh, could win, and it wouldn't shock me. I, I I agree, Kevin. No, we don't really agree often, but uh, Kojima could shock. He really could. I, I've been looking at a lot of his uh, social media stuff. He's still in really good shape. He's still working out. His arms are bigger than ever. He's eating the bread. But 
I, I honestly think he, he has the experience here. Sometimes evil can get a little bit headstrong. Sometimes evil is a, a one note guy who's like, I'm going to do this. And that's cost him in the past. So I can really see Kojima's experience paying off here somewhere. So, as much as I want to lean towards evil, I, I think Kojima's really got probably a little bit of uh, play in his area. Now, you talk about uh, lean in a certain direction. The historical records in our last singles match on this New Japan Cup list certainly lean in one direction a good deal more than another. Hiroki Goto versus Yujiro Takahashi, uh, their 16th singles match. Uh, Gino, the record is 14-1 Goto. Uh, does does Yujiro Takahashi have, have, have any chance of getting past the first round here? I love it. Come on, Gino. Oh, tell you. me how Yujiro's going to win this. Come on. No, no, no. Let, let me tell you how <laughs> Goto lost to Jay White. Do you remember oh, that? Please. Do you remember when Goto was all about Jay White and how much he was going to defeat Jay White and kickstart his whole you know, regime again as the number one guy? And where is he? Where is he? Yeah, you know, Jay's on the beach somewhere enjoying the sun and, and Goto's, you know, going to lose in the first round. I, I, I think it's done. It, Goto's finished. He should just, you know, hang up his boots, move on because he couldn't beat Jay White. And if you can't beat the best, why are you trying? Well, I will say this, Chris. Uh, last year, uh, New Japan Cup, everybody says, well, Goto, dangerous, won three of them. Uh, just came out and was atrocious against Sonata. It got bounced in the first round. Uh, that was the catalyst for Goto's renaissance of his career in the second half of 2019. Um, he had better win. He had better win this. He had better show up big. And he better do something here because a lot of people have started to warm to Goto. And yes, he did not defeat Switchblade Jay White when he needed to. Yes, he had won in the, in the G1, but again, couldn't have seen him as champion to, to Gino's point. But Goto had better show up because a lot of people are going, this is your time because this block is wide open. Uh, Goto had better win this one. Move it to 15-1. and one. <laughs> There you go. So uh, all of that will then culminate in a, in a second round, July the 1st. Hang on, hang on, yeah. We didn't. We didn't pick our winners for these two brackets. Who do we oh, think is going no. to win? Who, who who advances? So first of all, June twenty second, Tanahashi, Taichi, Ibushi, Zack Saber Jr., Ryusuke Taguchi, Sonata, Sho, Shingo, Takagi. Uh, one name each. Kevin. <sighs> I'm going to pick. I think my block final or my bracket final is going to be Ibushi versus Shingo. How about that? Hmm. I think Shingo wins over Show. I think Shingo beats Sonata, which is going to be just fantastic. I think Ibushi gets past Zack Sabre Jr. I think Ibushi then beats Tanahashi again. And uh, we'll see what happens when Takagi and, Tanah or Takagi and Ibushi hook it up. I have uh, Sonata up on Zack Sabre Jr. on, June, on July 2nd. Uh, Gino, you what's, what's your pick? Uh, I'm going to say to Gucci over Yuri Joe. So you're, you're an idiot. Oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Like, you know, I mean, yeah, big, big, big. big. Well, but it, it could happen. Oh, yeah. someone's calling. Case by case. Right. There you go. Case by case. Was that me? Did case I break case something? Case, I press something. <laughs> okay. No, no. In all, on, in all honesty for me, uh, I'm going mean to just go for an uh, evil Shingo final how does everyone feel about that is that all right with you that, kevin am i allowed to have that, an that block? yeah well we hadn't gotten that far i was picking who was going to win that little quadrant yeah, yeah. But, but if we got to okay so then in the bottom but, half of the bracket chris what do you think yeah bottom half of that bracket i do like evil and i do like the, the prospect then if, if, if sonata's on that other side in the right bracket well evil and sonata on july 3rd that'll be something um somebody's got it listen somebody's gonna wrestle evil if you you know on the second to win that little quadrant and then have to turn around and face uh, have another match the next night that's rough especially if it's a tenzon he could get there if it's a kojima 
that's going to be tough. Um, it, it, I think the winner, the winner of the whole bottom half of the bracket has got to be between Evil and Goto. They meet in the uh, second round. They should win. They should advance. And they should, one of those two, whoever wins that one, should win the block. So when, when Tanahashi's uh, side takes on uh, the Yujiro side, if you will, <laughs> who wins? Who wins uh, and advances to the final? What do you think, Gino? Okay. Uh, why, do you, why do you put this pressure on me? That's what I don't understand. Uh, I think you just also like saying the word quadrant a lot. That's the first time <laughs> I've heard someone say quadrant as many times as you. Very good. I, I, I don't know. Why do you put this pressure on me? I, I, it's the concept of the show, Gino. I'm just... I, I, <laughs> I'm looking... I'm just looking at the, the, the thing now and it's just... Uh, I'm not picking one. I'll, I'll look... Hmm... Uh, I don't know. Don't leave it with me. Let me think about it. Come back to me, please. Look, look, I'll, I'll Chris. Go, cause, because I did say originally when we first did our brackets in March, I had Sonata win the whole thing. Mm. I had a Sonata J White final. I had Sonata win the whole thing. So I'm going to put Sonata on the right side. But I think the question then is who's he facing in the final? And yeah. You know, I, I think Okada is a very strong left side prospect. I mean, the, you know, it would seem just purely on paper, uh, it would be all Okada. But I think the story and the motivation is too perfect for Hiromu Takahashi. And I think we are going to see my final will be Hiromu and Sonata with Hiromu going up. And we're going to see Hiromu versus Naito. Wow. Well, uh, I mean, I've got mine. Yeah, go on. Go I'm ready. I'm ready to say what I feel. Zack Sabre Jr. Zack Sabre Jr. Okada. Zack Sabre wins. Well, Gato? That's my prediction. Not Gato? What happened to Gato? Look, car accidents, tornadoes, whatever it might be. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> in all honesty, if I, if I was going to put money down, Zack Sabre, Okada final. Mm. I, it's amazing as, as we're going through. I haven't heard, I haven't heard Ibushi. Nobody says Abushi. Nobody says it, uh, my final four. My final four is Ishi, Okada, Evil, and Ibushi. Mm. And then the final is Ibushi versus Okada in a night one Wrestle Kingdom rematch. And I think the Golden Star wins it all. Can I can I ask a very uh, hypothetical question? Yes. Okay. All all this stuff's not going on. Okay. Nothing's going on. Everything's kind of back to normal. We're running the New Japan Cup later on in the year forever. So we're, now we've got the the Jay Whites. We've got the Farleys. We've got uh, the, the God Boys. We've got Osprey. We've got Juice Robinson. Does that change your winner? Do you all of a sudden now have a different pick to, than what you've picked in this? Oh, yeah. I think I think you have to pick. You have to pick the matches as to who they are. You know, I I wouldn't have. I, I think that this the, the bracket that Evil is in, the region that Evil is in, it, is more favorable for him. Uh, whereas Ibushi is going to have a rot row, and or you know, whoever comes out of that region. So yeah, you you have to have the matches as to who they are. It would take a mm -hmm. lot of the. I think it would have taken the junior heavyweights out, right, Chris? And it would have taken the young lions out. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and, and so then in my case, you know, when I'm picking Hiromu for the whole thing, you know, that, that obviously tw switched things up, um, you know, and, and you would have had to have said Jay White would have been a huge force. You would have had to have said that Kenta would have been a huge force. You would have had to have said that potentially Will Ospreay and Shingo Takagi would certainly be a very, very different match than Sho and Shingo yeah. Takagi would have been. Um, so, you know, but the, the point, you know, the, the real point at the end of the day is, you know, we had this, this little postponement, we had this huge bump in the road, but we're coming back to something that's uh, equally, if not more unpredictable, uh, you know, truly unprecedented, something that, that we've never seen before. Um, you know, I, I honestly cannot wait to get back to it. Uh, you know, obviously all three of us, again, you know, we'll speak to ourselves. We, we cannot wait to be with you live again very, very soon. Um, but... English commentary, Kevin will be there for English commentary uh, coming up just a, a few hours after those those shows end on NewJapanWorld.com. You can catch everything there, NJPWWorld.com, live starting June 15th, the Together Project special. Nobody knows what's going to happen. 
It's like the, it's like New Year's Dash. We won't know the card until the event starts. And then starting the very, very next day, New Japan Cup going right the way through to Dominion. And how amazing is that going to be? 3,500 people. You know, it's going to be one third capacity in Osaka Joe Hall, but it's going to be triple the energy that they're going to be putting out. Um, so it, it's really something that, that we can't, uh, you, you can't afford to miss in, in any respect at all. So, um, you know, just, just finally, very, very quickly, Gino, your final thoughts to, to the people here and a final message, your message for NJPW. Uh, hashtag ghetto's revenge is what I'd like to see. Uh, trending. Is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Twitter that well. So trending is uh, hashtag ghetto's revenge because it's about time that the man is allowed to get his revenge on Okada after the way he was treated. So hashtag Ghetto's Revenge, please, everyone tweet that. <laughs> final, uh, final thoughts for me, Chris. It's always great uh, to be with you guys, and I'm so looking forward for us three uh, to be at ringside again here very soon, calling matches. I'm going to do my best uh, flying solo. As soon as I get the file from the world team, I'm going to shoot over to the studio, and I'm going to knock out the commentary as quickly as possible so it can get back and get up on world as quickly as possible. But again, we're in a time of hope. We're in a time of positivity. We're in a time of, of, of love that we need all around the world. And I just think that new Japan pro wrestling is that shining beacon of hope that uh, everybody has been looking for. And it's, it's just wonderful. The press conference was amazing. This whole journey of the new Japan cup is going to be a special story. So uh, I just can't wait for it all to get started. Now you've made me sound really bad. Now you made it like it's all about me. I'm now I have to think of something nice to say. But you can't think of something nice to say, Gino, because it's all about you. That's the you, one. Yeah. You you make ghetto the, the the trending hashtag of the day, let's say. What's the first thing Gino's yeah. gonna do? Oh, Gato son, look what I did. I got you trending <laughs> That's because right. I put this out there. Me, 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 Gino, Gino, Gino. That's your problem. Is Kevin okay? <laughs> Just cut this call. <laughs> to end it uh yeah stay tuned uh, to njpw world for all that good stuff uh stay tuned to bullet club five shots gino gambino's very own uh, hey, broadcast look at it's that me. See, i'm me. magnanimous me. sometime me. and so uh, we will be <laughs> we will be chatting to you very very soon until the next time you're again you're saying that